At least it's empty. Well, mostly empty anyway. Yeah, we're working on a garbage truck. Oh, you might remember this one. I put new springs under it. Gosh, when was that? Probably almost a year ago. Doesn't sound too good. I hear uh, a bit of clunking. Let's pull the axle shaft out, try spinning it, see if it's in the differential or if it's in the wheel bearing. Before, obviously. see any metal in the oil. Doesn't sound too good. Right. This type of slack adjuster has a little release button here. So jam a screwdriver in there and then it takes a what is it five sixteenths I think square that's an eight point socket that I've had since way back Thorson tools part of my first tool set that I ever had when I was a kid and that's the wrong way so we'll go the right way It's on the floor. Okay, it should take a four inch socket, and then these little keepers here are gonna squeeze together when we slide the socket over top. doing this job it's gonna let us pull this whole wheel and hub assembly off without having to break down strip the wheels off the hub first pretty handy tool that I don't use nearly enough to justify the space that it takes up in my shop but you know a couple times a year it makes life a little easier Ooh. 
Well, I was just about to pop that seal out. The bearing doesn't sound too bad. I mean, I don't hear any rumbling there. But I think I may have accidentally found the problem. I bumped the drum. Check this out. Lug nuts came loose. So I believe we're barking up the wrong tree here. We can go ahead and put that wheel back on. That is not the problem. Huh. That's pretty crazy. Well, the nice thing about using this dolly is that typically you don't wreck the seal. This is a two-piece seal. We got lucky it didn't, didn't come apart when it came off. So we should be able to just put this guy right back together like nothing ever happened. Alright, this is an axle lock nut. So we're supposed to torque it to 200 foot pounds. Ish. We're just gonna guess at that. To make sure everything's seated. Spin it around and round. Back it off. Let's say half a turn. Now we tighten it to 75 foot pounds. Rotate it. Okay. Again. Now we have to back it off one tenth of a turn, which is one one wheel stud. So we're gonna line that up, back it off. One wheel stud. And we'll make sure it snaps in. That's all there is to it. is crazy. Busted. Completely busted. Wow, I've seen cracked rims. I've never seen one do that before. Yeah, that ain't gonna work. Not even a little bit. not good. That screwed up all the studs too. Not good. I've been waiting for a real nasty job to try this guy out. It's the Astro Pneumatic 490 Air Hammer, AKA Big Nasty. That's for sure. 
Here's what we're dealing with, folks. Obviously, this guy. He's the star of the show. I don't know much, but I do know that that's bad. Really bad. I mean, I've seen a lot of cracked rims, but I've never seen anything quite like that. Yeah, unfortunately, we also have some collateral damage. Pretty much anything that that rim was rubbing up against is also ruined. The brake drum, she's grooved up pretty good here. All the studs. And the other rim. It's not as bad as the brake drum. I cleaned it up the best I could. And I did kind of check it with a straight edge and it seems pretty flat, but I just don't trust it. Yeah, there's just too much risk. I mean, that's literally where the rubber meets the road. This is a big truck, carries a lot of weight. It's bombing down a bunch of pretty marginal Illinois roads. So I think the only sensible thing to do is replace both rims, the drum, and all of the studs. Well, before we get too carried away, Make sure I got the right one. Seems like it. A slight problem. I wasn't paying attention when they gave me the studs. This one has a longer spline. It's probably for an aluminum hub instead of a cast iron hub. I don't think it's going to cause any problems. I mean there's plenty of thread length but just to be safe I'm going to go ahead and grind that spline down on the bench grinder. Try to make it about the same length as the old ones. Yeah I should have been paying attention. I believe that'll work. And to keep the nuts from bottoming out, I'm gonna use this washer. I didn't have any regular M22 washers, so I just ground the sharp edges off of a lock washer. Well, a smarter person probably would have run the needle scaler over that while the studs were out, but you know, you work with what you got. We're going to grease her up so that hopefully it comes off a little easier for the next guy. She's obviously going to need brake shoes pretty soon.
already be broken. Hope we don't scratch it. Oh yeah. Carefully. Perfect. set without having to blast them. I know you guys are going to do it anyway, but you don't have to go in the comment section and tell me how terrible I am at changing truck tires. I'm fully aware. I just, I don't do enough of them to be any good at it. And that's just the way I want it. wheels on. Oh, with that stupid drop out in the middle. Oh, I didn't do that. Four hundred and seventy five foot pounds is the torque spec on those. It's been my observation that most most instances of wheels coming loose are not because of the initial torque usually because of, at least in our area, it's because of rust that builds up between the different layers. You take the wheel off and then you disturb that, those big chunks of rust. Then you go to put it back together. It seems tight, but those chunks of rust break up and pretty soon. If you're doing an Andrew Camarada or you're watching your wheel pass you going down the road. I'm just tipping the axle so that the oil will run into that hub that we had apart. And then we'll go ahead and top it off. Yeah. I Amazon these pumps that fit on a gallon bottle. Actually, they'll fit on almost any kind of bottle. They're fantastic. You know, it wouldn't be a problem on this one, but a lot of times there's just no room to fit a quart bottle. Let's 
still an animal on the road. But I don't hear any weird sounds. Almost sounds like it's missing a little bit. I think we're good. I don't hear any any unusual noises. It's still a handful to drive. If you guys remember before it had this really bad bouncing problem. I replaced the leaf springs and the springs on the body and he said it actually made it worse. So I don't know, the truck's kind of set up wrong I think. Garbage truck's gone. Shop's starting to smell a little bit better. All we're left with is questions, really. Why did this happen? What caused it to happen? I have no idea. I mean, I've seen broken rims before. I guess this is just a little bit more of an exaggerated case. As far as what caused it, I really don't know. I had some speculation in the last video on this truck that that body was designed for a tandem truck, not for a single axle. So it may just be that the, the configuration is wrong and it's a little bit, a little bit overloaded. I don't know what that truck grosses out at. That axle should be rated for, I would think at least 20,000 pounds. I don't know. I'm going to go ahead and throw in our glass smooth Illinois roads as a factor. I don't think it's due to age. Those rims are they're pretty new. They had a date stamped inside 2018, so they're only four years old. I don't know. Could just be a freak thing. Doesn't matter, I guess. It's fixed now. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Yeah, I spoke too soon. It's dead.